Now we've got the sheathing on the roof and it's starting to actually look like a structure and not just a, a big box sitting on the ground. And I see I got my ledges up there so I could progressively put the, the sheathing up top. So there's, there is, let's see, one sheet there, one sheet there, and they're cut to length. Another sheet, another sheet, and then a thin, a thinner strip going across the top, about nine inches wide. And same on the other side. And I left a gap on the inside, up near the ridge, for the ridge vents. So let's see if we can see that. Yeah. So there's the gap on either side of the ridge for the ridge vents. And there's a slight gap between each of the pieces of sheathing. Um, that's for expansion due to humidity. Things like that. And I think that's about it for the sheathing. Right now I'm going to put on the felt paper. Oh, actually, on um, the other thing I did was I put on, so you can see it up there, the drip edge. So the drip edge is to keep water off of uh, your, your seams so water doesn't seep in. And there, so you put the drip edge on this piece, the fascia board here, then you put the felt paper on, and then you put drip edge going along this rafter here, and that'll keep uh, wind from blowing up into the, uh, under the, uh, the felt paper and the shingles and blowing your shingles off. So that's what that's for. Um, so now I'm going to put on the felt paper, then put on the other drip edge, and then I'm ready to put on the shingles. Now I've got the, uh, I've skipped a few steps, but I put the tar paper on. Um, like I said, I was going to. So yeah. See there's a seam for the tar paper up there, and you overlap the top sheet over the bottom sheet so that if water gets on it, it all flows down and doesn't hit your structure. And um, see the drip edge over there on the edge. Um, I don't know if I can get to that corner, but you'll see that this drip edge under here is underneath that drip edge on the side. So it goes, uh, the drip edge is under here, and then the tar paper is on, tar paper is on top, and then that drip edge is on top of both of those things along the edge, so that if water gets on there, it goes away from your structure. And now I've started to do the shingling. And if you look at these guys, you'll say, why are they upside down? And I asked that same question to my friend who's showing me this. And he eventually answered that it's a starter row. So what you, what you do that for is because uh, when you've got your shingles and you've got um, these edges or these, these channels here that are open, and they're, normally they're facing this way. Um, but for the first row, you do um, it this way so that when you put things on top, um, like this seam here isn't touching your tar paper, there's another shingle under there. So when water eventually channels its way down here, it goes here and it touches a shingle instead of touching the tar paper or your structure. Um, and select that all the way down there. And so this edge right there, it's the same deal. Um, instead of having another edge or instead of having just the tar paper right underneath it, you have a shingle. And that keeps water off your structure. So I've got the first row I've got the starter row done, first row almost done, and this is pretty quick. Um, just keep nailing it. Uh, and you need to make sure that when you nail your rows, you want to nail somewhere near this little strip, um, because when you overlap your shingles, nailing here, um, so let's say the second row, nailing here makes it so that you nail at the top edge of this shingle. So when you nail these things in, they're nailed here and here. Because if they're only nailed here, that's a bad thing. So you want to make sure you put at least two nails in each shingle for each place that you nail. So, we can get to it, see how it comes along. Now I've got the roof all done, yay! Well, it's all shingled and the roof is weatherproofed. So I don't need to worry about rain anymore, which is the main goal of trying to get the roof on. Um, but, as I showed before, the, the shingles went on row after row, you just kind of stagger them. You can see the, the stair step pattern. And that's really, uh, you need to follow the directions inside of your shingle package. And that seems to be one of those things where you have to read the directions. Because uh, I got two different types of shingles 
uh, one, the first one, um, I didn't get enough of because I didn't read the package properly because it was poorly labeled. Uh, anyway, uh, the directions on that were completely different from the directions for these ones. Uh, the, the first ones were architectural shingles. These ones were three tab shingles. Um, anyway, everything went on pretty smoothly. You can see up at the top there's a ridge vent. I'll get up there in a minute. Stepping on a tarp. But I started on this side over here and work my way over, which leaves uh, overhang of your shingles. So you just have to go through with a, a shingle blade and cut them. Let me show you that real quick. This thing is a blade for cutting shingles. Invaluable. Regular razor blades don't work very well. This one cuts through them like butter, especially when they're warm or hot from the from the noonday sun. Anyways, that goes all the way up there. And I don't know if you noticed from last time, but I put some put these uh, blocks in to stabilize these rafters on the outside before they were a little a little jiggly since they don't rest on uh, the wall. So those blocks were, were necessary. Uh, the spacing isn't very important. It was just get them stable and that worked. And you can see the drip edge there and the drip edge over there. And now I will cross dissolve up to the the roof so you can see what the uh, the ridge vent looks like. All right, up on the roof now. And you can see the shingles up close. See their nails under there, nails to the strip. And what I found very important with these, these are three tab shingles from Home Depot. Um, but right underneath this black strip, on the other side of the shingle, is another black strip with tar, I assume, that has plastic over it. You should take the plastic off. Anyways, so here's the ridge vent. And we got all our shingles on there. And here's the here's the edge up close. It just shingles, shingles, shingles. And you can see up there the drip edge is, is cut on this part. You just snip it and then you can bend it over your ridge. And I'll hope that you can see this. Uh, each of these is one tab of these three tab shingles. Um, it's just one tab cut and kind of tapered back a little on each edge and then they're just laid on top of each other and, and nailed. And then those go on first and then you get the ridge vent and I got this from Home Depot. It comes in four foot sections. You just lay it in the middle, nail it in, um, and make sure that on your inside of your roof you've got, I don't know if you can see that, there's a gap and that is for the vent. So the idea is that all of your hot air from your structure goes up, up, up to the ridge is the highest point because that's what hot air does, it rises and goes through that ridge vent and comes out those holes there and I don't know if you can see these holes here. So, so you put that on and then you just shingle over it like you shingle here. Nail through it and eventually somewhere in the middle um, my friend who knows about roofing was helping me with this. It was invaluable. Um, and we needed a rope while we were up here at the top. Wasn't, didn't feel safe. <laughs> uh, but you double back, so you, you put one of these shingles, and you put one of these shingles, but then you have the black stuff showing. So then you just take the, the colored material from your shingles and you put that back on top of your black stuff. And you nail it in and then put some roofing tar or something like that on it. And then you're all set and you got a nice ridge vent. You got all your shingles. Fortunately, a bunch of pine needles already on it, but it's a shed. It'll, it'll, it'll deal with it. Um, anything else? I don't think so right now. So I've got a few more things I can do. Um, well, a few. There's still a lot to be done. Still need to do the siding. Need windows. Um, I need to anchor my structure. Well, so our building codes require that a shed 12 by 12 have the corners anchored into the ground. And I would think these pylons would be fine. 
but as an extra measure, I'm going to uh, I'm going to take some uh, cable, some steel cable, and drill a hole in each corner. Well, actually, two holes: a hole right there and a hole right there, and then wrap the steel cable around the edges. Have that go down underneath the structure and go onto those four by fours. So it creates a, a loop and then just uh, tie that off with some ferrules. I don't know if that's how you pronounce the word, but that's what I'm going to use. So I've got quite a few things I still need to do. And fortunately, stuff is already in the shed. Stuff that was in the garage. But I think I can work around that. And I need hurricane ties for those rafters up there. So still a lot of work to do. I'll find out what I'm going to do next.